Welcome, this is Knowledge Graphs. We are Harald Sack, Tabia Tietz and Sascha Bruns. And this is lecture number three, querying knowledge graphs with Sparkle. Now we are giving you a quick tour through the lecture. Yes, and in this week we will start with how to query RDFS. And this, of course, we are doing with Sparkle. We will introduce to you Sparkle. We will show you how it works and how to do really your first queries on your own. And then, of course, um, we want to show you lots of exciting examples and we want to use some of the largest knowledge graphs out there. And for this, we will also do an introduction to DBpedia and Wikidata. We will show you what they are, how to query them, and what exciting content they contain. And then we will go a bit deeper into the Sparkle query language and we will show you more complex queries. And this, of course, is not the end of the story. So we will show you then even more complex Sparkle queries because Sparkle is a really powerful language. As we will tell you, it is based on SQL, which is the query language for traditional relational databases. It's quite similar, but it's based on graph pattern matching, which means the similarity to SQL you see also then in the next chapter when we are talking about subselect queries. But what is typical for graph query languages is that we can follow paths in the graph, so so-called property graphs in Sparkle. So this is then subject of 3.4. However, besides all the query capabilities of Sparkle, Sparkle is more than just a query language. It's an entire protocol taking care of the communication between the Sparkle server, the Sparkle endpoint, and the client. So it's on top of the HTTP transport protocol that is the basic web protocol for transporting information there. And we will see how that works. Also then we will explain to you how the output of Sparkle queries is formatted and how you can deal with it if you take it, for example, also in your own applications. Okay, after that, what we are doing then is, of course, we have a last question. How can we, in the end, guarantee quality assurance in Sparkle? We will see, so we are dealing in the sem with the semantic web. That means the world we are looking at, it's an open world. Things which are not explicitly stated to be false or to be true are simply unknown and they are then potentially true or potentially false. And the same holds for things which are duplicates. So identity has to be denoted explicitly. If it's not there, it's potentially identical and also potentially different. And this makes, of course, quality assurance really a hard thing. And how we are coping with that, we are showing you then in chapter 3.6 when we are dealing with quality assurance with shackle constraints.